right, guys. So we're with Clint, which is our DTG specialist. Uh, we are going to replicate this shirt that we did uh, in screen printing. You can see it's for, I believe, like Lollapalooza or something similar. Something as for a sorority. It was probably a party. But we want to see how does this shirt, this screen printed shirt on a Comfort Colors, compares and contrasts with a DTG printed shirt. So we are, we're with Clint. We're gonna go through the process. Again, he is our mastermind in all of our direct-to-garment printing, so we greatly appreciate all of his time and efforts that he puts into using and learning how to use this machine most accurately. So he's gonna go ahead and kind of like walk us through if I you know, was wanting to print this shirt, which he's gonna talk a little bit about the equipment that we're gonna to use today. Um, and we're also gonna show probably the two different samples of like what one looks like with a very vibrant white to be more comparable to the screen printed white and one that's on a little bit more of a dingy white. Again, these are those comfort colors, so like those garment dyed shirts. These are thick, um, heavy duty shirts. They're great. So here we are. Um, this we use for direct-to-garment printing, which offers a pretty large variety of vague terms, but predominantly used for uh, t-shirts, tank tops, other smooth apparel items that you're really wanting to look for a full coverage, full color type design. Um, this is mostly to kind of compare and contrast what screen printing is compared to what a direct-to-garment uh, imprint will look like. And a little bit later in the video, we'll show mostly what we've done in screen printing and how the like the amount of time that it takes to set up a seven color job versus the amount of time it takes to print the similar or same pretty close to the same we're going to do two different options for you guys of uh, a same full color design here direct to garment isn't always the most cost effective which is absolutely why we'd like to bring up and are offering several forms of t-shirt printing because if you're only wanting a very small amount of t-shirts, direct-to-garment is probably more for you or if it's a very high quantity of colors, anything possibly over nine colors, direct-to-garment would also be for you. Um, anything less than that, if you're getting bulk amount, really screen printing would truthfully be ideal. Um, as always, we really appreciate you guys and I hope you enjoy this very quick Yeah, so with the DTG machine, we're working with a water-based ink, and when you do that, you have to apply certain chemicals so the ink would really adhere to the cotton garments. The primary tool that we use is the pre-treat, and we're going to apply it with a spray gun today. Uh, we usually have this big, bad, awesome, very efficient machine, but it is made from Germany, and the LCD screen went out on us because we we're doing so dun, dun, many dun. orders. So, that is kind of the downside here today, but we'll still give you the whole walkthrough of how it actually works. So, so uh, while I'm going to kind of go back and forth with you, so um, how this kind of works is he showed me earlier is that typically you would load the garment in here relatively as kind of straight as you normally would. This machine is very smart. He had mentioned it kind of knows how much pre-treat to lay down um, based off of, I'm assuming you can put in information like the color of the shirt, yeah, the design, yeah. consumption. You control the speed, the spray, how many times it goes back and forth. There's so many options. It brings it down to a science. So we can spend exact pennies on the dollar for this exact process. And this is important because you don't want to have a lot of waste. You can kind of see that there's like separate like containers and and, you know, this is a very expensive process, as mentioned. It's not as essentially, like, affordable for every print job. So you really want to make sure that things are dialed in just so then that way you as a business are also working as effectively. And paired with you as a client, you want to make sure that you're retailing a nice marketable shirt that your clients are going to want to purchase or you're, that you're able to sell. Um, so the shirt does go inside there, and then these are like the nozzles that spray this special solution. Um, it moves back and uh, forward and backwards um, and down to coat this whole entire shirt normally because that design that we're printing um, is, as mentioned, is this not a full, full design, but a 12 inch by, I want to say, eight inch area my finger measurements there maybe about nine inches tall tops so he would here with his makeshift you know which he doesn't really want to be doing this because as mentioned this has no guaranteed control except his hand which is great this is you know he's a problem solver that's what people always need to do 
but in the time being, he doesn't have that control as that nicer machine does have the ability for. You know, one of the biggest downsides with doing it by hand is that if you have the 12 inch wide design and let's say you only spray 11 inches, you're gonna have a very faded, nasty looking edge on that design and that's no good, you can't resell that. So with this thing here, pretty simple, turn it on. Usually, usually we go one spray, but we'll go multiple passes if we want the ink to really, really pop. And since we're comparing it to a screen print shirt, we're gonna do just that. <laughs> Step two, cure the pre-treat, dry it, however you want to call it. This is step two. Typically, we use the heat press. We do have some conveyor dryer options for the DTG, but curing this is a little more of a task. I was going to ask you if there was like a personal preference here or anything that you, I've heard people online mention like, oh, there's like a ring, like a heat yeah. press ring or something like that. Right. Like, how do you avoid problems like that? Is it during the pre-treat or is that more of after the printing process? So it happens kind of during both. You're always gonna have a bit of a line because it does require a tiny bit of pressure. But there Does is, it wash out? It will wash out. As a matter of fact, on single orders that we ship out, by the time it gets to the customer, there's no line. Perfect. It's been in the post office, it's been in a mail truck, it's been in a mailbox, and that's gone. Wonderful. There's no scorching here on the pre-treat, particularly because of our fancy knob right here. We can turn the pressure up and down, as well as this knob here that releases the pressure and turns it on. So we have it set to a light pressure where we don't tamper with the garment too much. Um, just for a close-up, how many seconds was this? I missed it. So we're doing 40 seconds to let this fully dry. Okay. Um, Do you ever re-lift it or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, so this is automatic. It'll okay. pop up when the timer is done at okay. 40 seconds. It heats at 3.30. Okay. Um, for garments that may be like a charcoal or a heather, we turn the heat down a little bit because those are known to scorch a little more. So, but for these comfort colors are pretty standard. They're beefy, really big fibers, and they can kind of take the abuse for lack of better words. But we make sure that we're not hammering it down too hard. Cool. And you guys kind of saw when he pressed it down, it was like, yeah, look how light that is. So yeah. not yeah. like HTV, which you guys have seen and me do HTV before. And you can still see some of the pre-treat still here. That okay. is a testament to how light we press this. Okay, Ooh. and you guys can kind of see, look, this is where there was no pre-treat this is where there is. And actually me touching it, which I hope that doesn't mess anything no, up, okay. but you can kind of, it does feel a little damp to the yeah. touch even. So, so now he has to invest another 40 so seconds. Another 40 seconds. Another 40 seconds. Sure that it's so and we've already time. not only invested time in the pre-treat area, we've also already invested approximately two to three minutes in this heating station as well. Yeah, and you know, unless you're running a multiple heat press area you got to take turns with these so when we start printing sometimes the print will sit on the printer for a minute while this pre-treat cures so we can start the next one so you know it is time consuming sometimes but we are very efficient when these orders come in and I was going. Should shave. Should shave. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good Boom. There we go. All right, so now we're back at our second hit. You can see that it's nice and dry. There's no different tones to the shirt. It's dry to the touch. It doesn't even feel crispy. I feel like um, the technology with the director garment, I remember before when we would pre-treat stuff, yeah. it was so like, Stinky yeah, thick. yeah, it was yeah. totally different. This is a so. game changer. You know, down here you can see, this is where the heat press didn't reach, Okay. but the design won't go on there, and this will dry by the time I get it in a box or a bag. Perfect. So, okay. Here's our design. Um, Eduardo over at our shop went ahead and got this sent over from the art department to, over to us. This is kind of like the program that's kind of used for this piece of equipment. I'm sure there's various rip, would you call this like a rip software? Yeah, something okay. like that. It comes standard with the printer. Okay, so depending on which printer, you know, that your decorator is potentially using or whatnot, there's going to be various forms of technology. This is the RIP software that comes pretty standard with this piece of equipment. We already have our artwork in here. It's exactly to size to what we already screen printed. So now he's going to send it over. Um, as mentioned originally, we're going to do two different types. We're going to do one with a very nice vibrant white and then one with a dingy white. So which one are we going to do first? We're going to do the one that uses 
more white ink. And more what white. determines the vibrancy is the white ink because it goes underneath all the color. If white does show through, then of course there's no color over it. Um, but what we did for these two was turn one up and turn one down. Simple as that. Um, so we're going to run the heavy ink one first. All right. So this one ideally should be most comparable to our screen printed sample that we did. And um, also to note, when we do rack these shirts, we do take a couple extra seconds to make sure that these seams line up perfectly with the preset rack. Um, there are times where they are sewn funny, but yep. we take the extra <laughs> effort to try and check the, the sleeves, the side seams, seams. And okay. There are certain models that have side seams that work really well. The comfort colors don't have that, but it's okay. All yeah. right, so when everything's all sent over, you can see it here on the screen. This kind of shows, similar to like the sublimation screen, um, you can kind of see that's exactly what the artwork's going to look like. Of course, it's not going to show that you're printing on a black shirt, as we did already enter that information um, over there at the artwork computer anyways. Um, and then pretty much we kind of go from there. Yeah, and then once you're ready for liftoff, all you do is hit the green button. And then, of course, it wants to do an auto cleaning. Oh, okay. So uh, we're going to have a, a slight intermission. So this is also something that's important, um, again, that goes into the time invested um, in to do a direct-to-garment shirt. So, again, we were at the pre-treat. Then we were at the heat press. Now we're at the machine. And this happens pretty regularly yeah. where um, the tubes, there's like an ink that's in these tubes. And the tubes need to be cleaned. And the ink has to get moved very regularly. Yeah. So here we are usually this takes four to five minutes so now not only is there a print investment there's a continual printer maintenance that goes all to print this one shirt we're literally looking at one shirt so again you know something to rationalize we don't essentially have all these initial delays when we do screen printing because we only set up that one time and then we kind of go back to us you know in production yeah. okay so now it's actually printing Oh, okay. I'll, I'll do the GoPro because you're standing in front of it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> Here, you hold the phone. <laughs> sorry, I was right in front of the uh, camera. You can always get the next one, too. Yeah, that's fine. Being a content creator is difficult. Yeah, it sure is. Okay, so... Interesting. Wow, wait, did we we didn't print that black, did we? I'm about to I can't wait to compare this. I can't oh, wait to don't? see them side by side. I wonder if we I don't think we did print that black. Didn't we select no black? Because yeah. if you see here, there's I think no it black did. at all. That maybe it's a hint That of must gray. be a different color or something. Yeah. Okay. So that's a testament to how literal this machine is. You know, it'll take the exact color and put it on there. We're gonna okay, so this, this literally came off the press and I'm already noticing interesting things that like are we didn't print like via screen printing and this is the direct um, artwork originally from our client so you can barely see it but there's like some music notes on this I think it's like a record UFO and they're actually not even on this shirt at all so you can just already tell it picked up here's some various golds or no it looks like we printed two golds too maybe it's half tones I'm not sure, but there's multiple forms of yellow right there. I'm going to have to, whenever we get back to the shop, we'll talk to Eduardo about it. Okay, yeah. so now that it's done printing, what's next? Where do we go from here? Take it straight off and put it back where it came from, step two. Right? Okay, we're right back to the heat press. And you can kind of notice, oh, I was going to say, do you open the shirt? You do open the shirt. Yeah. I didn't notice that from before, yeah. so. Now, with the white you have to be very careful not to touch it on the top of the heat press because of course that white ink will stick to it and then you have a mess and that's no good. So we use parchment paper. Parchment There's paper. All types of protection or sheets that you can buy. We yep. like parchment because it's cheap and easy. We use right. parchment paper very regularly, yeah. so. so. Boom, there you go. Same time it took to cure the pre treat. Will be the same 40 before. seconds again. Yeah, 40 okay. Seconds. And then. What about here? Like, do you know it's cured after the 40 seconds? Like, there's no... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we've messed with the temperature every now and then. We've come to find this is the best. Okay. We did it at a lower temp before. Shipped the shirts and they showed up. 
not dry, which okay. is no good. So we field tested it, and this is the Opwell uh, temperature. If it was any higher, you scorch your shirt and you run the chance. Of and again, he didn't change the pressure. No. Nope. So pressure is still really soft. Uh, Forty seconds. You said again at three forty is what you use. Three thirty is what you guys use. Okay. Of course, we can turn the heat up and turn the time down, but yeah. it doesn't make for a better end result. It just saves our time. Which okay. Is not the goal. So this is fresh off of after the heat press. Okay. Yep. So interesting. You know, so I'm touching it. It okay. is a water-based sink, right? Yep. So you're not going to have that same plastisol stick Correct. to it. The this color is matches. soft. Like I don't want to say it's soft because soft to me is more like a suede print, but definitely not nearly as yeah. thick. And I'll I'll do a side by side a little bit later. Um, and again, these are on garment dyed, so this. Even though, like, visually over there to here, it still looks pretty vibrant, but you can definitely see much more pigment of the yeah. shirt because you heated it. Yeah. No different than us if we weren't using, we use uh, special plastisol inks. Yeah. People hear me talk about them all the time, so. Right, and you know, like we said earlier, this is a big vintage style t-shirt. Those grooves of these top are bigger. If yep. you used a Bella Canvas or a Next Level, they're really, really tight, and that ink sits on top of it, and it's beautiful. Not saying this one's bad, no. but the other garments, we can play around with the vibrancy. Well. Absolutely. I really wanted to just do this side by side, yeah. you know, on the very similar particular garment. So right. that's perfect. So we do have one final step okay. that we do, and that's, we, we call it cleaning, but I would consider it maintenance, right? So, of course, during the sticky process of the pre treat and you're over here at the heat press, some dust gets on the shirt, of course. So we have these industrial size sticky sheets that we lay every shirt out and make sure that it's clean. Because if you get a messy shirt, chances of you getting another one are zero, right? So we take the time to make sure that you get a clean we preach, 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 preach about quality control. So this is super imperative, especially for me um, and or any of my clients. I really want to make sure that you guys get a very end result, happy, happy, finished garment. So, so this is just some sticky paper. paper? Just, just some sticky paper. <laughs> big industrial sticky I was like, I actually know what this is. This is actually bling paper, everybody. Yeah. So we'll do a video on bling at a, a, another time, but this is yeah. bling paper. This is your introduction it, to the cross-contamination. Yeah, this that. is literally <laughs> uh, bling paper is unforgiving. Yes. Like, let me just put it like that. So if you want to see, you can see some dust particles Okay. Here, and they'll just... Away. Not only is this sticky paper, but it is the most static paper I have ever experienced in my lifetime of this industry. Yep. Cool. And okay. It's, it's just the best thing ever. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. So Look at that. Up some fibers. You can't really see it, but it looks, yeah, yeah there's gunk on there. If you're shipping a black shirt with a white shirt, you don't want the black fibers on there either, so it's important to make sure. This is the just take care of any of those loose ends, and then now this shirt is all ready for pretty much packaging at this point. Um, bulk orders obviously are usually boxed up, but there can also be independent orders as well. And there you go, you have a brand new t shirt. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice. Boom. All right, so we're doing the second shirt, which on the second shirt, we didn't want to have that super, super vibrant white, which is which on that last white, we just did standard. We didn't add any extra white. So here, we're, I think you dropped the white all the way down to basically just the thinnest pass, basically. And what the machine's gonna do is go ahead and print the design again. He was explaining to me that there's two print heads inside of this machine. So on some other direct-to-garment machines I've seen where it'll print all the white, the whole entire palette pops out and then it prints the color. Whereas this machine does everything all inside but it never actually comes back out in between the colors, so. So we, uh we received the both of these designs <laughs> earlier. I went ahead and switched it to the lower white ink one. You can see if you go back earlier in the video, this is a lower amount of ink, obviously. Um, so we try and help out. Uh, I'll have to put those numbers in the video because y'all yeah. aren't going to be able to see that. But it basically was like 7.8 cc's of ink versus 4.24 cc's of ink. So a yeah. little bit different. And Clint is so awkwardly taller than I am and I'm not used to it. So oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, so he's going to send this second shirt. It's good to go. And it's going to print. The difference. When you pull it out, you might see a little difference, but... Um, it's amazing how much less ink it use, uses and how similar it could actually look. Yeah, well that, and it's so tough because they're garment dyed. Now if you were to do that on, you know, a Bella, like you said, yeah. or a Next Level, or even some of those, um, the Gildan ones that I've been sending you lately, you know, it, 
there, I think the noticeable difference would probably be higher. For sure. No different than like us with the ink doing one coat of ink yeah. or two coats and or, you know, or vice versa. It works out perfect with these garment dyed shirts though because people want that kind vintage, of vintage feel. Look, so it mm -hmm. kind of marries perfectly. Yeah, looking at it now, it looks really good. <laughs> So it's a little hard to see because there's like a casing right here, but it's going down um, to almost to be finished and it, oh, it's starting to pop out. Yeah, like, oh, I mean, on camera, you can almost hardly notice really a difference, even though this was, um, you know, the little bit less ink. Yeah, I think you maybe be able to tell like on this note that since it mm -hmm. stands out on the other one, you can side by side that. But it's funny because, like I said, that wasn't even able to be screen printed originally. I kind of know like yeah. on the very white sections, right, obviously. Right. But I mean, even around this is fine. That's kind of like a disco ball. So like me as a client, I probably want to be like tripping about that. But to me, that's where I mostly notice. Right. Yeah, you know, and this is. A secondary option. Right? Yeah. You know, we always have the option to move the ink up and down. It's really up to the customer and what, what they On their end result that they're yeah. ideally looking Correct. for. So back in the heat press, it's going to go. Um, and I think mostly that's it. Like, I don't know. All right, we decided to surprise y'all with a third shirt. And so this shirt is a next level, is this a 6210 or a 3600? So this is a 3600, it's 100% ring spun cotton. Um, these do have side seams, so as he's trying to line up the shirt, you know, he's kind of feeling out those little side seams as discussed. The comfort colors do not have those. So this just kind of helps, you know, line up the shirt. He already pre-treated it, we already heat pressed it. Um, he is gonna change the artwork to do the are we gonna do maximum? Are you gonna do the wanna, same amount of white or we maximum? Can do the same, or we can turn it up. I know we should do the same. Let's, so you can side by side. But the same with the lowest with the, setting or the, the normal fiber, setting. Yeah. Okay. So this third shirt will have that very first setting. So like the standard white ink placement on here. And so his big, you can go ahead and send it. His big thing was that the fibers of that comfort color shirt are so spread out because it is garment dyed. Um, it is just a thicker, beefier shirt that on shirts like this, this next level shirt, for instance, the fibers are very close together. Um, the shirt is also much thinner as well. So then that way, I think like the absorbency of the shirt is not all spread out and it's a little bit of a different perspective here. So you can already see it's laying the white. And again, not exactly the fastest process because if we were screen printing this, we would have already had about a dozen done and probably the time that it's taking for this one to just print the white. So that's also something to like think about when you're trying to purchase either on demand or in bulk. Time is a huge, huge, huge factor here. The purple is almost completely different mm -hmm. compared to the other ones. Absolutely, it looks closer to the screen print. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely pretty close. So this is the screen print one, and this lighting makes it terrible. But I'm gonna go back to the shop, and we're gonna do pictures and stuff <laughs> like that. But this, before getting heated, definitely looks closest to the, the originally screen printed. Although the screen print is on that comfort colors, but this is a very, very close yeah. comparable. And really you know, the white. Like we said earlier, it is a water-based ink, so the garment does have some effect on it. If we, did a, it if we wet, did a cream but... color or a heather gray or things like that, it would look almost identical to the screen print. But you gotta keep in mind that first DTG printers didn't print on black shirts. Yeah. So the technology's come a bit of ways and they still have more room to go. But those lighter garments really All right, so that kind of wrapped up our DTG projects here with Clint today. We're gonna head back over to the shop and kind of compare and contrast um, all the projects that we did, our screen printing projects, alongside with all the projects that he did with us today for the direct to garment. So thank you so much. Thank you for yeah. being our specialist. It means the world to us. So thank you so much. And y'all stay tuned to some future direct to garment projects. Sweet, see y'all later.
So today we're mostly going to be focusing and talking about the seven color imprint that we did with our Plastisol inks on our Anatol Volt. Um, this is a black comfort colors uh, garment dyed tee and we did have to go ahead and print um, seven colors but we made eight films and we did that because I'm going to turn y'all around and show you guys the computer screens um, from here. You can see the client's mock-up on a black shirt which is very very similar to what we have here. Um, you know, there's really no differences at all with that from what our client supplied with their PMS colors. However, the client also did uh, chambray yeah. shirts, mm -hmm. right? And when you look at the chambray uh, art proof, you can see here that they removed a color, but they added black and they removed... They removed white. White. Which okay. we needed anyways to use as a white base. We used and the white added and the base here. black, which we didn't need on the black shirt because obviously shirt, black shirt. Not that it, we're completely against printing black on black, um, but given that we were at maximum colors with this design, um, and probably the client did not feel that it was absolutely necessary to print the black on black. But here on the chambray, you can see that they let the color of the shirt um, pull through here on the disco ball. But you can see that that black is up here in this general area, um, as well as an outline around everything there. So, so this is where... Uh, he has all eight films, yeah. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, eight films. And here is like all the color kind of broke down. So the black, uh, yellow, pink, blue, green, purple, and then a golden yellow. So there are two shades of yellow used on this design. No half tones. And then this was the extra... As the base. Base white. White for okay. the whole thing. For the whole thing. Yeah, the, okay. on, on the black shirts only. Oh, okay. Only on the black shirts. And then obviously on the chambray shirts, we did not print that white. So... Um, as you guys have seen in other videos, we obviously go and talk about us making films, but really I just wanted a little bit of information of like, hey, this is what the artwork looked like. This is our actual finished product with the screen printing, and we are going to go look at how DTG compares to this. Um, over from Clint's, and we're going to go ahead and show Eduardo the direct-to-garment samples that we did. Uh, we did do those two, one with normal white ink and then one with a reduced amount of white ink. Uh, so what do you, what is your initial like reaction seeing the DTG to the screen printing? I think already visually in the camera and our lighting, yeah. it's like pretty apparent. However, um, as you guys get to see the length of time it took to print just one of these versus the amount of time it takes to set up, you know, this whole screen printing job and the process, but it was a bulk order. Um, but visually, like, side by side, they obviously look one way, but yeah. how do you feel? Like, if you were to receive this shirt, what would be, would you be happy with this still? Yeah, I'll still be happy with it. I mean, all the colors are there. Not super bright, like I anticipated, because this is DTG. Mm -hmm. But I'll be happy with something like this, honestly. I, I'm not against it. For as many colors as it is. Yeah. And it is, to me, I thought it was pretty, um, you know, we had dabbled with DTG a little bit before. Mm -hmm. And to me, I thought it was pretty crazy um, how thick the shirt used to feel. Like yeah. with the pre-treat and everything. And so remember when um, we had that one machine that we had for like yeah. a little bit. So I did like that about this yeah you know, you compared to this I mean I still know that this has a good body to it because it's a, has a base so it's yeah. already thick um, but to me I felt like wow this feels you know pretty pretty soft yeah it's like pretty wearable Wear I yeah, say. yeah really wearable and then like obviously this is only a seven well here's an eight because we ended up printing the black I don't yeah. know if you noticed yeah <laughs> I, I, feel, I filmed that part so yeah and uh but yeah like this obviously it does have them it doesn't have any limit on how many colors you can print no nope. So, you know, if you were to go with 10 color imprint or something like that, mm -hmm. I would be super happy with it. Knowing that, yeah, 10 color imprint. On I think it was pretty tough printing. because this was obviously a garment dyed shirt, yeah, you know, too. and I think one of the big perks of us using, you know, the ELT inks and the specialty inks, it's, you know, we don't have a lot of bleed through. Yeah, we Whereas I, we both believe because this had been heat pressed, you know, three, four times by the time everything's said and done, there is a lot more bleed through, you know, as yeah. well, so. Cool. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I can, I don't know, I, I, would, I would wear something like that and I wouldn't mind it not being super bright. Yeah. I guess that's the only comparison that I can make. Yeah, visually, visually seeing them side by side. So. Put it next to each other? Yeah, sure. I'll probably take some pictures. 
so. Oh, maybe you can yeah. the video. Possibly. It's on reverse, so. So aside from talking about these, I also got to pick up some huge oversized samples. So what size of shirt is that? That's an extra large shirt and that is a 16 by 20 print. So, and this is also DTG, it's a direct to garment. Um, you can kind of see that it has natural distressing to it. Um, but it looks super cool on this tie-dye shirt. So this is another option or alternative that we could do um, for direct-to-garment versus screen printing because we can't even we don't even, we don't even screen print this big. So um, so this opens up the doors for us to be able to offer um, some different opportunities so, for some bigger oversized prints like this. Uh, open up the other one as well. There's one more. Same with this one. This one's large. This is a large t-shirt. Same thing, real big, oversized print, 16 by 20. So it's, I think that's kind of cool. Again, with a very natural distressing. And this is also on a comfort color shirt. Um, kind of gives that nice vintage vibe. This is probably printed with a less of a white deposit because it's not very vibrant. So I thought those were kind of cool. It's interesting to see uh, some different options and opportunities of how to, you know, I don't know, print shirts. These are more for retail, but it doesn't really necessarily mean that we couldn't do it for sororities or other team or businesses. Anyways, we're going to spin you guys around. I'm going to include some videos. So thank you so much for joining us with this DTG versus screen printing comparison. And we hope to see you guys soon. Thanks so much.